What's going on, everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to play and reviewing the game Tom Clancy's Politica. This game came out in 1997 from Red Storm Games, I believe. Yes. And it is for two to eight players. Now, this game is based off the Tom Clancy novel of the same name. And the object of this game is you're going to try to uh, win the most amount of political influence in the country of Russia before a certain amount of rounds end. Uh, now, there's a little backstory with this game. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev is no longer in power. And Boris Yeltsin, the president, has passed away. So depending on how many players there are, you can have up to eight different groups of people trying to gain control of Russia. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be uh, moving, battling with dice, and then there's a lot of crosstalk that goes on between the players as far as trading and buying things. So let's show you Tom Clancy's Politica. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and show you the uh, components of the game. We'll go ahead and start with the game board. Um, according to the instructions, this is modern day Russia. You've got uh, Comey over here, Evenki over here. Please forgive my uh, <laughs> pronunciations. Now, there are eight factions that you can choose from in this game, and the object is you're trying to uh, gain the most amount of influence uh, by the end of a certain amount of rounds. Now, right over there is what is called a round counter. Uh, the typical game can go to six rounds, but you can go up to ten if you would like to. Now, each of the uh, factions are represented by what are called representatives, and here's a couple of them right here. Uh, you're going to get two representatives per faction, and, and on your turn you'll be able to move both of them. So here are the different faction cards that are in the game, and all of them have a special ability. We'll start with the military. Um, their special ability is that they can move any uprising one extra space during their movement phase. Now we're going to talk about the phases and the uprisings later on, but this is their special ability. The Nationalists, uh, during their movement phase, they can move any one representative anywhere on the board. So they don't just have to move themselves, they can move anybody anywhere. Here we have the Reformers. Uh, during their productive phase, they will receive no less than $30,000. And I'll talk about the production phase as well, but generally what this means is if they have a majority of influence in a country and during the production phase, if that country is chosen on the card to uh, produce, they're going to receive $30,000 as opposed to $20,000 the other countries would get. Here we have the KGB. Uh, during the trading phase, uh, they can steal a random card from another player's hand. Here we have the communists. Uh, what they can do is they can do a challenge with the representative for free and then get another challenge on top of that. Um, basically, anytime you're doing a challenge, you'll basically be able to do it once. The communists will be able to do it twice. We got the mafia, and the mafia can uh, steal $20,000 from any player during the trading phase. And we have the separatists. Um, they will receive double production, basically meaning they'll receive $40,000 instead of the typical $20,000 or more depending on if there's inflation or not. But basically what this means is they're going to receive double the amount of whatever is the production is in a separatist area where they have influence. Now if you look on the board here, you'll note that some of the countries are shaded brown. Those are the separatist areas. So if a separatist has the majority of influence in one of those areas and during the production phase, if that country is chosen to produce, they are going to receive double the amount of production or money. And then we have the church. Uh, the church will receive an extra defensive die when their representative is in the region. So if someone is trying to attack the church to gain influence during a, the dice battles, they're going to receive an extra defensive die. Uh, now right here on the board you have these little things and they are called influence tokens and they look like this and of course each faction has their own set of colors. Um, depending on who many, how many players are playing, you're going to receive a certain amount of influence tokens in the beginning. Uh, my wife and I have a two player game going on so each of us are going to have 39 influence tokens. And what you're going to do is you're going to, each person is going to take their influence tokens, shake them up in a little cup and then draw out three or so and just start placing them randomly here on the board. Um, which Whichever uh, representative has the most amount of tokens on the board, they're going to have that amount of most amount of influence in the country. And that becomes important because, number one, uh, you're going to move your influence counter up and down depending on how many countries you have influence over. And also, 
you're going to be drawing production cards uh, in the beginning of your turn. And I'll talk about how that works here in a little bit. Now there are also uprising uh, tokens here. Um, and there's three different ones. There's one that has a very strange name I can't pronounce, but there's also one that's a political uprising and a student uprising. Um, and whoever has the most amount of influence tokens is gonna basically control the uprising and they will be able to move the uprising around on the board. Now what the uprising is gonna do is whichever country the uprising is on, which uh, whoever has the most amount of influence in that country is not going to basically be able to produce anything. Um, and produ production is how you're going to get money in this game. Uh, now you're also going to have eight dice. You're going to be able to buy dice in order to try to uh, win influence. Um, there's also money that you're going to receive. Um, each player in the beginning is going to receive $50,000. And you also have three different types of cards here. You have a production card, an event card, and an action card. Uh, the production card, when you draw it, is gonna have three different countries. If you have influence, a majority amount of influence in either uh, any of the three countries that are showing here, you are going to receive $20,000. So for example, if uh, this country right here, which is, I have all the influence in, if this country was, uh, on the uh, production card, I would receive twenty thousand dollars, and uh, whoever had the most in euro would receive twenty, etc. Now, every so often, there's going to be. Uh it's going to ask you to draw an event card and the event cards are over here and they do various different things but I'll just go ahead and show you uh, there's a little story over here and then this basically just tells you what the card does in this case it says for one round of play all players receive an extra die when defending here's another one um, here's one that says production in these three countries doubles for one round so that means you would get double the amount of money if you had influence in those countries which is rather cool and finally, you have action cards. You can actually buy these uh, on your turn. And in the beginning, everybody is going to receive three action cards. And what these action cards do is it's going to help you uh, on your turn or hurt your opponent. Here's an example. Uh, here's one that says, during your challenge phase, which I'll talk about, you'll get one extra challenge with three dice in this space. And uh, I'll talk about how the challenge stuff works here. Um, here's one that says, may be used during your movement phase to move any uprising one extra space. So basically that means you don't have to have control of the uprising to move it, but you can move it off of your country if you would like to. So these action cards can be rather helpful. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what the turn order is. Uh, right over here, it has five different things that you're going to do. And then uh, on part four, you're going to do this. This is the challenge order. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and draw a production card. And uh, you're going to go ahead and look at the countries. And whichever representatives have the most amount of influence in these countries, they're going to receive $20,000 or more, depending on if there's an inflation or an uh, action card you can play. Uh, now, the next thing you'll do is move representatives and uprisings. Now, the way you move your representatives is so long as you have any amount of influence in any of these little cities or countries over here, you'll be able to move through it like so. I have influence here, I can move through that. I have influence here, I can move through that. I will have to stop once I reach a country where I have absolutely no influence at all. Um, now, if I end up starting in a country, say I started over here, I had no influence, I would only be able to move to an adjacent city or country next to it. So I'd only be able to go here or here or here, etc. Um, and the same goes for the uprisings. Um, if you end up controlling an uprising, like I have control of this, works the same way. So long as I have influence, I can move the uprising here or here and then here and here, etc. I can move it as far as I would like to, unless of course I end up in a land where I have absolutely no influence whatsoever. So after that, you're going to go ahead and do what's called trade and set up alliances. Uh, now, what you can do in this game is you can trade cards, you can uh, pay people for cards, uh, you can uh, trade out influence tokens. Um, you can do all sorts of things as far as the trading phase goes. Another thing you can do is set up alliances. Um, we have a two-player game going, but if I had a three-player game going, let's just say we had a three-player game going, and my wife and I agreed we wanted to do an alliance of some sort. So what my wife and I would do is I would take my, uh, she would take her influence token and I would place it here on my representative card, like so, uh, saying that I have an alliance. Um, when I have an alliance, basically what this means is anytime I'm doing a dice challenge, if my ally has a token in there, I will be able to roll extra dice, uh, depending on how many of them they have. Also, I'll be able to move through their spaces. Now, an alliance is going to get broken uh, as soon as I either attack them, my ally, or I get another ally. Uh, so you can do that as well.
And finally, next up is the make challenges. Now this is the action part of the game. So the first thing that's going to happen is the challenger is going to go ahead and buy dice. And these die cost $20,000. Uh, the second thing is um, anybody that has any action cards that can either add to their dice or to take away from, they're going to go ahead and play those cards. So for example, I have a card here that says uh, maybe use for yourself or another player to add one extra die when challenging. So I could play that card right there. Um, then the defender will go ahead and play an action card to, to modify if they have one. And then the challenger will roll and the defender will roll. So this is how it works. Um, each die costs $20,000. So let's just say I spent $60,000 and I ended up getting three dice. My opponent is going to roll the amount of dice that is shown of, of the amount of influence that they have here. So in this case, my opponent would roll three dice. So what would happen is both people would go ahead and roll, and this is me, let's say I rolled, I rolled a 12, and let's say my opponent rolled, let's just say they rolled a uh, 7. What's going to happen is, since I won this roll, I'm going to remove one of their influence tokens, like so, and I'll go ahead and place one of mine there. Now I'm only going to be allowed to do this one time per representative. So once I finish that, then I can go to the next representative and uh, do a dice battle that way. Now if the defense wins, basically nothing is going to change. Um, I will just simply uh, not do it. Nothing will basically change. Uh, let's say I, I want to try to get take control of the uprising, which I can do. Uh, the way that would work is the same way as if I was attacking another country trying to get influence. I would buy some dice and then I would go ahead and try to take over the uprising by beating their roll. Uh, in this case, the defense is going to get as many dice as they have people in the uprising. So in this case, if I were to buy, say, four dice and I rolled this and my opponent rolled something like that, I will beat them. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and take one of their influence tokens out and then place one of mine in there instead. And now, of course, throughout the game, you're going to have to keep track of uh, how many countries you have influence over. And so you're going to basically be moving these back and forth here on the influence counter. And uh, after everybody has gone, you're going to move that round counter down one. OK, and the last thing you're going to do is you're going to buy action cards. Action cards cost uh, $20,000 each. Uh, if there is inflation going on, which that happens during an event, it's going to cost double that. But anyway, that's basically how the game works. Whoever has the most amount of influence in uh, the different countries in Russia is going to win the game. And that, folks, is Politica. So my final thoughts on Tom Clancy's Politica. Well, to start off, I do like this game. Uh, it plays a lot like Risk. Um, of course, when you have the different crosstalk and the ability to buy things from your opponents and trade and all that, that adds a pretty unique element to this game. Um, I like the fact that they have eight factions. Uh, that's pretty cool. I never thought I'd see the day where you have a church that you would be playing as a token, but that's rather cool. The game is not very difficult to learn. The instructions are pretty small. So if you wanted to try to get a group game going with some players and you didn't want to take a long time to uh, teach somebody how to play the game, this is a good game that you could use. One thing, the components, as far as some of the components, uh, the influence tokens are really small. And they can be a little bit of a pain to uh, shuffle around and turn over, but it's not that bad. But I'd have liked to have seen them maybe be a little bit thicker. And uh, I've also seen players complain that the game is not balanced because the groups that are able to collect money as a special ability have an advantage uh, because this game is all about money. When you have money, you can buy extra dice. Um, you can buy action cards. So that can give you an advantage from what I have read. Uh, now, obviously, if you wanted to alter the uh, abilities, you could very well do that if you needed to. I definitely think this game would work better with more than two players. I'm enjoying it as a two-player game, but uh, of course you can't try to build alliances and you can't uh, do any of the crosstalk uh, throughout the game. Uh, that you could do with three or more players. Uh, this game is not expensive. I found this at a thrift store out of town when I was working for, I think, $2. I think you can get this game for probably about 12 bucks plus shipping on eBay. Um, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool little game. So if you're looking for a game that sort of plays like Risk but has uh, different crosstalk options that you can do and trading and buying different things, uh, give this game a try. Not much, not very expensive. It's pretty easy to learn. So guys, that's my uh, review of Tom Clancy's Politica. Have a great day. Keep on gaming. We'll see you soon.